Good morning children. Welcome to your biology class. We are dealing the chapter, chapter 15, our environment. In our previous session, we discussed about food chain, food web, biological magnification and also layer depletion. I hope all of you studied about that. We have discussed about the energy flow in an ecosystem. What is the main source of energy? Sun. Solar energy is the main source of energy in an ecosystem. And the green plants, they are the producers in an ecosystem. And they capture only one percentage of the solar energy which fall on the their stems, leaves, etc. Isn't it? And only 10% of that energy will be transferred to the next trophic level. That is called as 10% law of energy. And we discussed all these things in our previous session. Today, let's work out some problems related to this 10% energy flow. First question is, a food chain is given grass, grasshopper, frog, snake, hawk. And the question in the given food chain, suppose the amount of energy at fourth trophic level is 5 kilojoules, then what will be the energy available at producer level? Then how can we get the answer? First, we have to write this food chain. Grass, grasshopper, frog, snake, hawk. Then, mark all the trophic levels. Here, the first trophic level is grass. Second is grasshopper. Third is frog. And the fourth is snake. Isn't it? So, in the question, it is given that The amount of energy at fourth trophic level is 5 kilojoules. So, at fourth trophic level, the energy is 5 kilojoules. So, already written. Okay, so we have to find out the energy available at producer level. Producer is grass. First trophic level. energy of the previous trophic level will be transferred to the next trophic level. Okay, that is our law. So, what will be the energy available at third trophic level? It is 5 into 10, that is 50 kilojoules of energy available at third level. Then what will be the second level? 50 into 10, that is 100 kilojoules of energy available at second level. Then the last one, producer level, right? First trophic level. Then what will be the energy? 500 into 10 means 5000 kilojoules of energy available at the first trophic level. That is our answer. This is the second question. And the question is, in the following food chain, 500 joules of energy is available to the plants. How much energy is available at third trophic level? And the given food chain is plant, sheep, man. So first, you should mark the trophic levels. Plant is the first trophic level. Second, sheep. And third trophic level, man. And here in this question, it is given that 500 joules of energy is available to the plants. So, 500 joules of energy, right here. And we know that only 10% energy of the previous trophic level will be flowed to the next trophic level. So, what will be the energy at second trophic level? Find out the 10 percentage of the 500 joules. Then you will get 500 into 10 by 100. What is the answer? It's 50 joules. Isn't it? So what will be the energy at third trophic level? You have to find out 
Ten percentage of the five hundred joule. Then fifteen to ten by hundred. What is the answer? Five joules. So the answer is five joules. This is our third question. The highest concentration of the chemicals will be accumulated at the last trophic level of the food chain or the topmost trophic level of the food chain. So, with this given organisms, you have to make a food chain first, like grass, insects. Then. Frog, snake, last one, hawk. So definitely the non-biodegradable chemicals will be accumulated at the last trophic level of the food chain. So here the answer is hawk. Our next topic is Waste management. Waste management is the activities or actions that are required to manage waste from its inception to the final disposal. You studied about two types of waste, biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. Both these two types make pollution, you know. Non-biodegradable materials they will persist as such. So, they will make more problems. So, how can we manage these ways? The first one, we have to follow three R's. Then what are these three R's? Reduce, reuse and recycle. Reduce. We can reduce the food waste. Right. And we can reduce our own transport, a usage of our own vehicles. We can opt public transport. That will reduce air pollution. Isn't it? Then reuse. We will throw the plastic bottles and glass containers after its use. But we can reuse that. We can store that something, we can store something in that plastic bottles and glass containers. We can use it in the kitchen. Isn't it? The next one is recycle. Recycle means, yes, uh, the waste material materials will be recycled and to form any other useful products we can make. Examples of plastic, metal, papers, these are the examples. Next one, the first thing we have to do is segregate or separate biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. We can keep two dustbins in our house. Then, preparation of compost. Biodegradable waste, we can dump this kitchen waste, vegetable waste, Dump and compost. Okay. Then the most important thing is we have to change our attitude. Children, this chapter is completed. In this chapter, we studied about waste materials, biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste materials. Then food chain, food web, different trophic levels. 
energy flow ozone layer depletion then some problems the end our last topic is waste management okay so from next class onwards i will start last chapter i attach the youtube url to watch the animation of this topic download the notes and learn attend the test questions see you in the next class with another topic till then bye